to Sanctuary Storytime. Today's program is Friendship at the Feeding Station. And I am so happy that you are here. If you're happy too, then shake your tail feathers. At Hawk Mountain, we love nature. We love the birds, especially the raptors. We love the plants. We love all wildlife because we know that all living things are connected. If you love nature too, then get up and move around like your favorite animal. Shh. All right, all right, all right. Well, I am so glad you're joining us today. We have a great program planned. I'm so excited. We are first going to read a fantastic book and it's called Friendship at the Feeding Station. And this book is fantastic for so many reasons. Number one, this book is going to teach us about why raptors or birds of prey are so important. So important for the environment and also for us as humans. And guess what? We're part of the environment too. Also, this book is fantastic because it teaches us the importance of friendship. And hopefully we all know and feel that friendship is so important as well. And another reason why this book is so special is because it was written by someone who was a trainee from Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. And she wrote this book and her name is Anisha Pokerel. And she is from Nepal, and she studies vultures in Nepal and also in the United States. And Anisha wanted to be here today for this program as we're sharing her book, but she wasn't able to join us. She's here in spirit, but we thank you, Anisha, for this wonderful book. So after we read the story, we're going to talk a little bit more about what it means to be a raptor, because the characters in this book are all raptors, and they're so cool. So when we're done doing that, then we are going to get to meet a real live raptor. It's going to be awesome. And lastly, we are going to learn how to make some super awesome white rumped vulture crafts. And guess what? White rumped vultures, another shining star from our story that we're going to read. So before we get started with the story, I want to talk to you about where the story takes place. This story takes place in Nepal. And if you remember, that's where Anisha, who wrote the story, that's where she's from. Do you know where Nepal is? Hmm, it's pretty far away from the United States. Let's take a look, shall we? So here we have a globe of the earth. Okay, here we have the United States and this little purple state here, that is Pennsylvania, where Hawk Mountain is located. Nepal is, they have to cross the Atlantic Ocean, go all the way over here, all the way into Asia. And Nepal is this green country right here that's above India. So Nepal here, that is where this story takes place. And that is where Anisha Pokerel, the author, is from. Are you ready for the story? Okay, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Friendship at the Feeding Station by Anisha Pokerel. It's a beautiful day in Pokhara, a city in Western Nepal. There are mountains, lakes, and beautiful birds. Winter approaches and so do the birds. A young steppe eagle and his mother fly to Nepal to escape the harsh cold winter in their homeland in Mongolia. And if you look here at this picture of the earth, you can see Mongolia up here in blue. And that's where the steppe eagles are living. But when it gets so cold in the winter, they have to fly south to where it's warmer so they can survive. And they fly all the way down here to Nepal, which is an orange. Okay. Mom, are we there yet? Asks a weary young eagle. 
Step, look, there is the beautiful Pokhara Valley. Let's find something to eat, replies his mother. Step excitedly sees vultures at a carcass below. Now a carcass is just a word that means a dead animal. Let's go there to the carcass. It looks like a party. Mother explains, that's a feeding station where a dead cow is left in the fields as food for vultures. They don't hunt like us. They eat dead remains. Better to avoid them. The eagles have a hard time finding food. They are hungry after the long journey. Farmers poison rats, mice, and other small mammals, so each year there is less to eat. Step wants to give the feeding station a try. He lands just far enough away so he can see the carcass. It is quite a sight. So many different kinds of vultures are feasting and fighting for the food. Griffy, a Himalayan griffin, is the largest vulture. He bullies and tries to chase the others away. Seeing the fierce hungry vultures, Step is scared, yet he doesn't give up. He slowly inches closer towards the carcass and is about to snatch a piece of flesh when a shadow suddenly falls over him. It is the bully, Griffy. Griffy chases Step down to the ground in anger. So you are stealing my food? A terrified Step whispers, oh, p -p -p please, please let me go. I am sorry. I just needed some food for me and my mother. Well, you are not getting any. Nearby, Garuda, a beautiful white rumped vulture, is feeding with his friends. Garuda is kind and friendly, not like Griffy. Realizing that Griffy was attacking an eagle, Garuda rushes to help. Angry, Griffy leaves the young eagle. Garuda helps Step to clean off his feathers. Thank you for saving me. My name is Step the Eagle. Step was about to hop away, but turns back. Garuda offers a piece of meat to Step. Delighted, Step nods to Garuda and flies to share the food with his mother. The eagles are well fed that day. Step is happy with his new friend Garuda, but he doesn't tell his mother anything. Next day, Step looks for Garuda. Sure enough, Garuda is gliding in the sky. Soon, the two new best friends meet every day to play games and explore Pokhara. One day, Step's mom finds out about the friendship between Step and the vulture. Step comes home from the feeding station. Mom, here is food for today. Mom is furious. Where did you get this food? Have you been hanging out with those Vultures, they are mean and filthy. We are eagles, kings of birds. We have a reputation to keep. Step is surprised. But, but mom, Garuda helped me. Not all vultures are bad. The angry mother tries to calm down. You, the majestic step eagle, sought help with vultures? I am worried about you, son. They are dangerous, and I don't want you to get injured. Please keep your distance. Like every other day, Garuda meets Step at their favorite spot at the top of the hill. But he sees that Step looks ups upset. Hey, Step, let's go play. Step replies, oh, I don't want to, I'm sad. Step explains, my mother found out about our friendship and well, she got really angry last night. She doesn't want us to become friends. She said mean things about vultures. Garuda sighs. 
Well, I am used to others saying mean things about us, Steph. Don't be upset. You are my best friend. Follow me. I want to show you something. Garuda leads Steph to the feeding station where other vultures are feeding. Look at everyone feeding. There is blood everywhere. Now, what would happen if we vultures had beautiful head feathers like you and Eagle? Step guesses, uh, you would get dirty? Garuda nods. Yes, it would be very hard to get clean and blood would get stuck. Ooh, it helps that we have no feathers on our head. We also have very good eyesight and can locate a carcass from far away. And then Step says, so cool. I do have very good eyesight and a very sharp beak. Step shows off proudly. Garuda says, Step, everyone has a role to play in nature. We feed on carcasses. If we were not here, dead animals would pile up and spread diseases. We are nature's cleaning crew. We, as vultures, clean the environment and stop the spread of disease. Steph is impressed. Well, we eagles are predators. We hunt other small animals and control their populations so they don't destroy the environment. Garuda nods. You have a job too, Step. Vultures are disliked because we don't look beautiful. Some years ago, thousands of vultures were killed. It was terrible. Human scientists found that the dead cattle we ate were treated by a painkiller that damaged our kidneys and poisoned us. We almost disappeared completely and diseases started to spread to humans. Garuda explains, some concerned people created feeding stations to give us safe carcasses to eat. My father says there are more of us now that vultures are still being poisoned and our habitat is being destroyed. Step says, well, my mother said there used to be plenty of food before, but now our prey are being killed by people. Our forests are becoming cleared and our lives have become harder. Garuda and Step say together, life is hard, but we should also have fun. We must be kind to each other. I love you even more, best friends. Step asks, Garuda, now I want to take you somewhere. And together they fly to see Step's mother. Step introduces Garuda. This is my best friend Garuda. He and the other vultures are nature's cleaning crew. They clean carcasses and make sure disease doesn't spread. He also is the kindest bird I know. I really hope you would understand. Mother, I learned a lesson, not to judge others by the way they look. Mother Eagle is silent at first. Then she smiles and says, okay, I will try to learn from you, Step. I just want you to be safe. Since then, Step the Eagle and Garuda the Vulture remain best friends. Okay, so now let's look at this picture. Oh my goodness, this picture on the right is a photograph of a white rumped vulture. And this is a vulture in India. Can you remember who from the story is a white rumped vulture? Our wonderful friend, Garuda. Garuda was a white rumped vulture. So, and look at the head is bald. There's no feathers on the head. And Garuda explained how that helps keep his head clean when he's sticking his head inside a carcass or a dead animal to eat. So that helps them. And also, can you see, it almost looks like a collar, a white collar. The white rumped vulture has uh, all these white feathers around the back of, of the neck, around their head. And here, on the left is a picture of a real step eagle. Isn't that a beautiful bird? Look at it. It's brown. You can see that sharp hook curved beak. Beautiful, beautiful. And here on the right 
is a picture of Anisha Pokerel, and she is the author who wrote this book, who was a trainee at Hawk Mountain, and she works with vultures in Nepal. She also does vulture studies in the United States, um, and she is fantastic and so passionate about vultures and raptor conservation. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed that book. Did you like it? What lessons did you learn from that book? Did you learn how important friendship is? And it doesn't matter if you look different or act different. Don't judge someone by the outside. Be their friend. It's a great story. And I love that friendship between Garuda the vulture and Steph the eagle. What else did you learn? Did you learn about why raptors like vultures and eagles are so important? We learned how vultures are so important. They're nature's cleanup crew. And if it wasn't for them, there'd be all these dead animals outside. But the vultures clean up the dead animals and eat it. And that keeps diseases down and it helps protect the environment for everyone else, including ourselves as people. And remember, we are part of the environment. And did you remember what Steph the Eagle said, what the eagles do to help keep the environment in balance? Do you remember? He said he was a predator and he hunts. So they hunt and they hunt a lot of other types of animals to help uh, keep those smaller animal populations in control to help keep the environment in balance. So they're very, very important. So they were also talking about what makes a raptor a raptor. Can you remember when Garuda and Step were talking and they were talking about the different traits that they have that make them good at what they do and make them raptors. Can you remember? Were they saying that they have really good eyesight? They were. So all raptors, including eagles and vultures and other raptors include hawks and falcons or owls, osprey, harriers. So all raptors have really fantastic eyesight. And this is the skull of a red-tailed hawk. And look, this is where the eyes would go. This is called the eye socket. So what do you say for the size of the head of this hawk that the eyes take up a lot of space? They sure do. So raptors have really big eyes for the size of their head that gives them amazing eyesight. What else? What's another characteristic that raptors have? Hmm, let's look at the beak. All raptors have a sharp, curved, hooked shaped beak and that's what they use to tear apart the flesh or the meat from the animals that they're eating so this beak kind of serves as their fork and knife maybe if you're eating meat at home maybe you would use a fork and knife to cut up the meat raptors not so much they're not very good at using forks and knives but that's what they have their beak for to pull apart the flesh what else let's see also most raptors have really sharp talons on their feet, and especially the eagle, like Steph the eagle, they have talons on their feet that they have to use to catch, squeeze, hold, and kill the critters, the creatures, the prey animals that they're hunting. So this is their hunting tool. And this happens to be the foot, the real foot of a red-tailed hawk. But was there a hawk in the story? No, but there was an eagle. There was a step eagle. Now, we don't have step eagles um, here in Pennsylvania where Hawk Mountain is, but we do have another eagle we see here in Pennsylvania and in the United States. It is our national symbol. Well, there's two eagles that we could see in the United States, a golden eagle, but I'm talking about a bald eagle. We see a lot of bald eagles at Hawk Mountain, and this is the real foot of a real bald eagle that was alive at one point. Look how big those talons are. So just imagine Step the eagle from the story having feet like this, but bald eagles, man, they sure love to hunt fish. So you can see there's a fish in here and look at those sharp talons that are gonna help them catch their food. But in the story, we also learned that vultures, they're not hunting live animals like an eagle, they're eating dead dead things, things that are already dead. And remember that word for that? It starts with a C, carcass. So a vulture might not have these sharp talons like a hawk or an eagle. However, another thing that makes 
vultures, raptors, is that they're part of the raptor family tree. Their ancestors are part of the raptor family tree, so they're all related. They're all related. I am wondering if you are ready to meet a real live raptor. Are you ready? Okay, I'll be right back. Just, it'll just be a moment. Look at my beautiful coworker. This is definitely a raptor. Is it a vulture? Mm, no. Is it an eagle, like Steph the eagle from the story? No. Can you take a guess as to what type of raptor this is? I'll give you a hint. Let's look at the color of the tail. Can you see the color of that tail? It's a red-tailed hawk. It's a red-tailed hawk. If you could see that tail. She doesn't like to have things behind her that she can't see. You can see that that is a red-tailed hawk. And that also tells us that this hawk is an adult because only the adults grow in those red tail feathers and that's how they got their name. So before they're an adult, in the first one or two years of their life, um, their tail feathers are different. They're brown and banded. But there's another way that we can tell that this is a red-tailed hawk if we can't see the tail feathers or if it's a young and doesn't have a red tail yet. And we call it the belly band. So if you look at her front, at her chest, can you see that she has white, creamy colored feathers? But then can you see that darker brown band of feathers kind of by where her belly would be if she had a belly? birds have a different digestive system than us so they don't really have a belly like we do but if you can see that brown belly band of feathers that's another marking to let you know that this is in fact a red-tailed hawk now has anyone seen a red-tailed hawk where you live or in the wild have you maybe you have because guess what red-tailed hawks were actually very common maybe you've seen some around they are actually one of the most common raptor species that we have in our country, the USA. So they're doing really well. And part of that reason for that is because they're very adaptable. They can live in many different types of places and different habitats. Um, they can eat a wide variety of food. They'll eat anything they can find or catch, like small mammals, rodents, like mice, uh, squirrels, chipmunks. Um, they could eat a snake or, you know, frogs, uh, uh, salamanders, things like that, maybe a small bird. You know what? They'll even eat roadkill. They'll even eat a dead animal. If there's something already dead, they'll eat it. That's less work they have to do for hunting. So we would call them a generalist. They'll eat anything. Look how beautiful she is. And earlier we were talking about what makes a raptor a raptor or what traits or characteristics do raptors have and here she is live look at that beak look at that sharp curved hook shaped beak that is her fork and knife remember that helps her tear apart the flesh she's looking all around of the animal she's hunting look at her feet look at those sharp talons on my glove and i am wearing this glove to keep my arm safe because her just even perching on my arm could really hurt my arm because her talons are so strong and sharp. And she has really big eyes, really good vision. 
She's looking all around. She's looking all around. And she, really, she lives at Hawk Mountain because she's actually been injured. She actually was hit by a car. And can you see how her wing, her right wing is drooping down? Um, it doesn't work well. She cannot fly. Um, and so she needed a place to live where she can be fed and be taken care of because if a raptor, if a hawk can't fly in the wild, would it survive? No, it wouldn't. So we take good care of her here, here at Hawk Mountain and she does a job for us. She works as one of our educators to teach people and kids and families like you all about raptors and why they are so awesome and so important to protect. And something you can do to help protect um, red tail hawks or other raptors like her is to not litter because many of these raptors get hit by cars because they've learned to hunt by the road. And why do they hunt by the road? Because there's lots of critters, lots of small animals by the road eating our trash, eating our trash, our food, maybe an apple core or something that maybe we throw out of the car while we're driving. So by you taking the pledge not to litter, that is gonna help these birds and help them maybe not get, get hit by a car. Look at her looking around. Um, you may notice too, she also has over her eye a brow ridge. It kind of shades her eye a little bit. And that's a, an adaptation, something that helps her survive and be a good hunter uh, for the sun because she's out during the day um, and she sleeps at night. So we call that diurnal. So that brow ridge over her eye, that you can see it a little bit when she turns sideways, it helps shade her eyes so she's not blinded by the bright sun. So I hope you really enjoyed meeting her um, a live raptor, and I'm gonna put her back, and then I'll be right back, and, and then we're gonna learn about how we can make a white rumped vulture craft, okay? See you soon. Okay, I'm back. Did you enjoy meeting her? Wasn't she beautiful? Okay, let's think about that story we read, Friendship at the Feeding Station. Who was Garuda? What was Garuda? Garuda was a white rumped vulture, and we're gonna learn how to make them. And also, for everyone who registered for the program, I sent out a separate email that has a link with a video about, with step-by-step -step instructions about how you can make this. Look at them, they're so cute. First step, Get a toilet paper roll. Hopefully you have toilet paper at your house and hopefully someday soon you will have this empty roll and this is what you're gonna use for the vulture's body. So you're gonna take this toilet paper roll and you wanna make it black because remember the body of the white rump vulture is black. So you can make it black by a lot of different ways. You could paint it black, you could color it black with a black marker or a black crown or you could cover it with black felt or black and paper, lots of options. So then what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna attach the wings. So again, you can use black paper for the wings or black felt, and you're gonna uh, cut out some vulture wings and you could use um, a pencil. You could use a regular pencil on the, if it's black paper to draw the individual wings, or this one is, uh, looks like some um, white paint or maybe some uh, glue. Then you want to add that white collar that we saw around Garuda. At the, so you could get white paper and cut out the round collar and glue that on or tape that on. Then you need the head and the feet, which are kind of like a fleshy kind of pinkish color. And remember, we learned that vultures don't have any feathers on their head. Do you remember why? Because what are they eating? They're eating dead animals, which we call a carcass. So they don't have feathers on their head when they stick their head inside that carcass so they don't get guts and blood all, all stuck into their feathers. So you could, if you're using pink paper, you could cut out the head and the feet or you could use pink felt. So then you need the beak because remember, we learned that vultures like all raptors have a sharp hook-shaped beak that they use to tear apart the flesh of what they're eating. So you can use black paper to cut out the beak or black felt 
And lastly, they need big eyes because we know that all raptors have amazing eyesight and that helps them find their food. So here we use some googly eyes, googly eyes. Um, you, if you don't have googly eyes, you could just draw on the eyes uh, with a pen or marker. And then it could be a little puppet. You could have fun with your little vultures. Hi, please come play with me. So have fun doing this craft. So that's wrapping up our program for today. I'm so glad that you joined us. Thank you, thank you. We hope to see you again. Our next Sanctuary Storytime is on Thursday, August 13th at 11 o'clock a.m. And we are going to read the book, Are You a Spider? And guess what? We're also going to meet a real live spider. I mean like a big one, like maybe a tarantula. So you don't want to miss that one. And remember, we have our Sanctuary Storytimes on the second and fourth Thursday of every month throughout the summer. And their program is always at 11 o'clock a.m. Have a fantastic day. When you're outside, look at the skies, look for any vultures you may see, and maybe you'll see an, an eagle too. All right, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye for now.